so I have like been doing my eyebrows at home. Obviously, I haven't gone anywhere to get them done. So I've just been tweezing them because I've been so scared to cut them and fuck them up. Because like usually you're supposed to like brush them and you're supposed to like cut them and then like brush them down and then like cut them like to the shape of your eyebrow, you know? No, I did not know that. Okay, well, <clears throat> you know, I did it. And I fucked them up. So now I have to fill them in. <laughs> oh, I was like, they look pretty, they look fine. <laughs> no, on this one, you can see like, it, like you can still kind of see it, but I tried to fill it in like right here. It's mm. way lighter than the oh. rest of my eye. <laughs> uh, well, they'll grow back eventually. They'll grow back, they'll grow back soon. It, it won't take long, but for now, uh, they have to be filled in a little bit. So. Are we recording right now? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so the eyebrow thing, in high school, uh, I was, it had to be my first two years, junior, or, wow, stone, uh, freshman or sophomore, for sophomore year, uh, because I was an ROTC, but one of the dudes, something happened to him, he was asleep, or, I don't know, but they shaved off his eyebrow, like why he was passed out or like taking a nap or like after PT, like everyone was exhausted and like laying there and they went up and like, Vroom! and it looked ridiculously That's funny because awesome. just with one, with just one, it looks yeah. really funny. Well, I've seen those like TikToks or videos on Instagram where they do like a, it's like a thing, I don't know, with a razor and it's supposed to be like a joke. Well, I've seen ones that go wrong where they like do the razor and then they flip it like to the back so the back of the razor is to their eyebrow mm -hmm. and I, it, it was like a trend kind of thing but i've seen ones that go wrong where they flip the razor and it still cuts their eyebrow <laughs> still yeah it. It, okay so an eyebrow. <laughs> i still that guy i still remember his name he wasn't even in my grade his name was mike pena and it took forever for his eyebrow to grow back Gosh. and he would like color it in and try i'm sure he got it like his mom or sisters or someone to help but it was always different you could tell him like you're getting better mike it's getting close you're getting pretty good now getting but for a long time it looked like uh the meme with the angry seagull with the big eyebrows like oh, yeah, yeah yeah drawn on like chola eyebrows you know exactly <laughs> yes exactly he was just and i remember that day he just did it with a sharpie unreal that's so funny. That's fucked, but so funny. <laughs> it happens. I hope it grows back fast. That's all I'm saying. Because I don't know. I don't remember it growing back fast for him. <laughs> but you just have probably like one section, not the whole thing. Yeah, but I have never filled in my eyebrows. Like ever. I have pretty prominent eyebrows, like to begin with. And so yeah. <laughs> when I fill them in, I'm like, okay, I have to be careful because I don't want to look like a chola with like super drawn in eyebrows. <laughs> But I think they look fine. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have noticed if you didn't, didn't say anything. Yeah, exactly. They look like normal. But if I did I mean, it, you would be able to tell. Also, I mean, maybe if you were in person, I could be like, what's, what happened here? <laughs> is it, okay, is it a trend or a common scar for people to have like a little piece missing out? Or is that from them fucking up at home? So it's a trend. That is a very common scar. People who get punched like right here or hit in the face with softball, baseball, whatever, and it cuts open. Because I've seen like a lot of people. Yeah, but it's a trend now where people shave like one line into okay. the eyebrow. And where did that come from? I have no fucking idea. I feel like it yeah. is from people looking at the scars and being like, that kind of looks cool. And then they do it, but like, no. <laughs> now that's not how trends start. Trends starts like if one celebrity in a music video comes out. Yeah, I honestly have no idea, but it's it, got to come from somewhere. We'll look that up. Yeah. It reminds me of the Nelly, the band aid, the one band aid. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we did that for. <laughs> he did that for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but was it for a reason? No. Oh. Interesting. So. No. I mean, maybe there was, like, it was a, like, I, no, I don't know. Well, like, he didn't have an injury, but maybe it was for a, uh, a cause or a symbol or something. But I don't, I mean, he did, wasn't injured. So, speaking of Band-Aids on your face, I remember in high school, I literally had the, I think I've told you the story. I don't know if I've told it on here, but I had the biggest pimple that I have ever seen in my entire life right on my nose. It was, like, right here. 
and it looked oh yeah you have told me this yeah yeah and it looked so disgusting so it came like overnight too it was just a thing on my face and so I thought that it would look better if I just put a band-aid over it so I did and I went to school and everyone was like oh my god what happened and you can obviously see there's like a bump under the band-aid that's how big it was and I was like, I was at a pageant and a girl just kind of like flung her shoe around and cut my nose. So I put a Band-Aid and they were like, uh-huh. I was like, yeah, that's what happened. And then like two days later it was gone and I obviously the Band-Aid was off and I had no scar. It healed. <laughs> Magically. It's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. Uh, no, that was a bad story, but oh, whatever. Well, uh, that's a bad cover story that's what i'm saying oh very bad cover story like, that's what i was saying yeah <laughs> my bad well welcome to episode 22 guys <laughs> <laughs> 22 all right 22 i feel like i don't know i have a weird thing with numbers you know how some numbers are just like aesthetically pleasing or like appealing yeah. and i don't know 22 is one of those for me i like 22. i think i think uh any repeating number 55, yeah. 66, 88. Well, two is my favorite number. So oh. just like like 22 also. But I think like, like 27. 27 is an ugly number. Like I don't like that. Thanks. That's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> no, but I said repeating numbers. Like, the- Yeah, repeating numbers are aesthetically pleasing. But you know, like, like, I don't know, 30, I don't know, 34. No one likes that number. Like, yeah, but you're saying 22, so 33 is, 44 is. Yeah, but I'm saying that aren't. Oh, um, it's funny that you say that because the, you know how when like people notice, uh, not the stupid thing where it's like, oh, 11, 11, make a wish. Not that, <laughs> not that dumb fucking thing. Not that. Uh, when you notice numbers, like you'll notice repeating numbers all the time. Yeah. I remember I was talking okay. to one of my friends, actually the same friend that, uh, uh, said that uh, he grew up seeing ghosts. Oh, yeah. He said that he all the time will notice, I don't, I don't fucking know what time it is, but let's just say it's 12.58. And he says he'll see it like, he goes, I feel like it's every day. I just happen to be looking at a clock right when That's it's that time. time. And it comes to me all the time, like in my car dash or like all the time. Yeah. And then uh, a lot of people in the in the crazy community <laughs> not in the crazy community i'm just saying in the uh, occult or all the people that believe in spirituality and syn- synchronicities yeah um they're saying that those are coded messages that the universe is trying to tell you something and so it's trying to tell you something by just showing you something so many times that you notice it but you don't know what the message is it's up to you to go figure it out well like how are you supposed to figure that out I don't fucking. Like, what are you know. supposed to do at twelve fifty eight? Yeah, I don't know, you know? but like, that's one of the things. Da Vinci Code shit, like what? I don't know. Exactly. Like, there's a lot of people that will notice um, when it's. I forget what time it is. Uh, oh, twelve thirty four. One two three four. Four. And they say they all look at the clock. They're like, it never fails. I'll look, and you're like, what the fuck? Like something's going on. There. That's if you read a lot of stuff online. That they say that the universe is trying to tell you something. That's weird. I just hate the fact that, like, there's no code break for those things. Uh, Not yet, yeah. (laughs) Not yet. But you know what I mean? Like, even with the the dream stuff, remember they have, or not remember, but how they have all of these dream interpretations and, like, even Sigmund Freud, his, uh, like, his whole dream theory and everything, and he lists symbols and all of these things that come up in your dreams quite often and what they mean. But it's like, how, one, how does someone know what these mean, first of all? Second of all, like, there's not one of those for everything, so. There's, there's no way to know what it means. Yeah. What they could do, they would have to, it it would almost be an angelic decipher code. Like, they had to be given a template that says, cows mean wealth. Uh, pigs mean death like there's no way to know i dream that i jumped off the second story building and killed myself it means you're unhappy with yourself find a more interesting hobby they can't you can't fucking say that because for everyone it'd be different so they can't know nobody can know i feel like with freud so freud was is a famous um psychologist 
So I feel like with him, it was more of like... I thought he was a psychoanalyst. I I guess. I don't know. Same he's family? A psychologist. Yeah. He's okay. A psychologist. He may has have like a subspecialty, whatever. But ultimately, he's a very famous psychologist. Um, studied a well, lot. Not anymore. He got mauled by the tiger, so... No, not that one. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I studied a lot of him in college. And... Um, I feel like more of what the dream theory is based off of is trends. So he got like so many people mm, and yeah. then he said, okay, <clears throat> this person is dreaming of this and then psychoanalyzed them. And it's like, what are they going through? And then he put all of them together and was like, okay, this is my consensus. When you dream of this, this is what you're going through. Damn. Maybe, is that how he did that? Or uh, you're, you're, th you're theory, thinking that? I don't know. That's my theory. <laughs> Because, yeah, okay, that would be a better way of doing it because if you sampled however many, let's say 10,000, and yeah. if 500 of them, which is a good chunk, have a dream about what's a common dream? Um, when you're falling and then before you hit, you wake up, mm -hmm. like something like that. And then if he notices all the people in, in the same people when he goes through their uh, the review or whatever you would call it, the analysis – they're all having marital problems. Right. He would be like, mm, that's it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. You're right. He finds like the common denominator in those people. And then mm. obviously, like, it's just like normal research. You have a few outliers, but overall, you will come to a general consensus. And if you don't, then it doesn't mean anything. Then he's like, okay, I have no fucking idea what that is. <laughs> okay, but how about this? How do they explain why does one situation in a dream equate to something totally different in your life well, why wouldn't it be like oh i dreamt that my girlfriend's cheating on me uh maybe your girlfriend's cheating on you or you subconsciously have these feelings no it's you, my i don't know you know like what i just said you you yeah. uh no, you wake up before is, you hit the floor and that is it's a marital a problem thing. so like your partner cheating on you in a dream or you cheating on them it's supposed to be something with your relationship but it's not necessarily cheating I think it means like something that you guys are in a rut or you need something exciting or whatever it may be. I don't remember the exact thing, but again, I think it would be more of him saying, okay, all these people are having these cheating dreams, but this group of people, let's say they don't think that their partners are cheating on them, but they do find themselves in a rut. They do think that their relationship could be more exciting. And it, again, it's the same common denominator. No, I'm asking, what about for the dreams that aren't related? I'm saying oh, like, the, I'm but saying then how- It's the same thing. So if you have a dream that you're stabbing someone, let's say, or you keep seeing knives in your dreams, let's say, then he's gonna take that knives, all these people that think of knives, and then he's going to have all these people who, let's say, they want a pet. That, that's what it is. Then he's going to associate knives with, oh my gosh, the majority of this group wants pets. That's what it is. My question is, where is the explanation of why the human mind goes to the knife? Oh, I understand what you're saying. No idea. No, like, who's going to figure <laughs> that out? Like, why would it be based on how many people... How many people can have the same dream and that means somewhere in their development of what the world is and how they're shown their view, things mean the same things. And yeah. a knife means you want a pet. Those are totally unrelated. But right. how is that connected? In the, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, that's a good question. I have no idea. I feel like that has more to do with like a, our subconscious thinking of things that we see in our norm in our everyday lives and like I'm sorry I just burped and like <laughs> and you okay no I'm not okay <laughs> I told you I have stomach issues I have gastrointestinal issues no idea what's going on acid reflux so <laughs> I feel like it's more of like your subconscious associating um something that you think about every day with a thing that you see in your everyday life. So I'm pointing at my kitchen as a knife. But I'm saying if you're thinking of like, oh, I want a pet, I want a pet, and you're cooking dinner, then it could subconsciously associate. Yeah, but then everyone's doing that? Do you think it's cultural? Do you think dreaming of cows 
if in, in an American dream book means the same in a Japanese dream book? No. No, right? No. Yeah. Like, I think if I look up Japanese dream, like, whatever, or if you're on Japanese internet and you look up dream interpretations, it's going to be completely different than American dream interpretations. So it's, like, it's based on culture and your upbringing. Things yeah. associated with something for a mass, that's why they, they have those dream uh, interpretation books because, like you said, somehow they got to get the data and then find, oh, that means that? That's weird. Okay. Yeah, that's what I think. These are all my yeah. opinions. No idea. <laughs> but I did watch uh, um, The Social Dilemma. Have you seen it? Uh, is that a movie? It's a documentary on Netflix that talks about how technology, AI, social media, all of that is affecting our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. It's very fucking interesting. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you watch it. It's very cool. And the people that they bring on to interview and to talk to, they are people who used to work for Google, Amazon, Facebook, all of these people who were very high up or were co-founders or they created the... Um, Oh my God, totally just blanked. They created the algorithm for Facebook. Oh. They created all mm -hmm. of these things and they left the companies because they saw the bad that it was doing to the world. And now they're on this documentary talking about it and what exactly the algorithms do and how they get you in those little rabbit holes on Facebook and on YouTube and all of those things. Damn. And what I didn't know was if you google something here uh, this may be just me i had no idea because i told dylan and he was like presley <laughs> but i didn't know that when you google something that isn't what shows up for anyone who googles it it has to do with where you are it has to do with your history it has to do with things that pertain to you not necessarily the next person no, I did not fucking know that. Yeah, so if I Google something, you know how it comes up with um, the predictions? So it's yeah. like, how? so let's say you type in Jennifer Aniston, and then they come up with all of the fill in the say Jennifer Aniston is, and then it'll say married, dead, uh, whatever. Exactly. So if I look it up, it may not necessarily be the same as when you look it up. No way. Yeah, you want to try it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so go to google.com, because I usually just search in the bar. What are we typing? Jennifer Aniston is. I said it may not necessarily be. So this could be, but let's say someone in Japan, it probably isn't. I don't know. Okay, so what's your first one? Dating. That's mine. Uh, it says, dating, she married a guy. Married to how old Greek? That's what mine does. So I think that's also um, okay. I don't know if that's true because I would think that the predictive would be geared towards the most searched. That's what I thought, but that's not what the the documentary said. Hmm. It is not the most searched because that's what I told Dylan. I thought it was whoever searched that the most. And that's why I said dating first. Yeah. Yeah. No, apparently it has a lot to do with location and mm. a lot to do with like what you look up. So straight up demographics on search bar, but location based. Yeah. Which I had wow. no idea. No, that's really cool. Yeah. And I was like, uh, that damn. so weird. That gives us, that gave me a whole new perspective on, <laughs> on the internet alone. Because to me, I was like, wait, I thought what I'm seeing on the internet is something that everyone is seeing on the internet. And they were like, no, that's not true. So on Facebook, let's say, you know, the ads that come up about um, voting, politics, all of those things. Mm -hmm. So let's say, um, like, I'm Republican. I don't follow politics very much, though. But like, I know for the most part, I'm a Republican. Okay. Mm -hmm. But for somebody who is, let's say, an extremist, someone who is more about like, I don't know, like no government at all, basically. Yeah. What shows up on my feeds that is talking about politics is not going to be on their feeds talking about the same political things. It's going to be hmm. extremist and mine's going to be Republican. Well, that I know because that's done by your search history. 
yeah, that's done by like videos that you watch and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but that's ads. That's that's different. Like if I go to Google or Amazon and search for which I have uh, dog ladder for my boat, mm-hmm. boat dog ladder, and now the fucking ads are all over the place. Yeah. Same. But I wasn't on Facebook or Instagram when I searched for it. Yeah, I know that, but I didn't know the search thing on Google. Yeah, but it's the same concept. Algorithms and what it does. Yeah. The analytics of the actual user. Damn. Highly recommend watching it. And the way that is they it did it in the document. 2020 or is it last year? No, I'm pretty sure it was released this year. Oh, nice. Um, and I actually heard Tom Segura talking about it on Two Bears, One Cave. So I was like, oh, I need to watch that. So Dylan and I watched it, and like obviously while we're watching it, Dylan's on his phone, and I'm like, dude, we're watching a movie. Yeah. <laughs> about how social media is taking over our lives. Big time. Well, that's... And he was like, you know what his excuse was? He goes, it's my fantasy football draft, not social media. Oh, is football? I don't even know what week of football it is. I haven't even watched any games really? or the playoffs of of uh, NBA. Mm, I don't watch basketball, but I I have been watching the football only because Dylan so what team does he go for the Giants um whatever team he's betting on oh okay oh that's right (laughs) he was talking about that parlay yeah Yeah. but I think he does like the Giants I was just asking because of New York so yeah I think he's a Giants fan and then I was like are you a Cowboys fan I'm like no 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 that's yeah everyone assumes that about Texas but remember first off there's two teams in Texas and San Antonio doesn't have one. So that's <laughs> like growing up, yeah, a lot of people automatically become Cowboys fans, but it's just because we're here in Texas. Yeah. And it's like if the Cowboys are playing somebody, I'm partial to the Cowboys, but it's not like they're my favorite team. Like I'm only partial to them because they're from Texas. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. But uh, my favorite team are the Saints. So love the Saints. Drew Brees, my heart. But you got in trouble like about a year ago, about half a year ago recently. For what? I don't know. He said something he shouldn't have, and then he went back on it. It was right around the Black, Live, uh, Black Lives Matter issues, uh-huh. and then all the, when that first started happening. So sooner, maybe like three months ago. That's like he it. said something, and then about a teammate, but it wasn't negative. It wasn't negative, um, but it wasn't like, um, I don't like know how to say it this. He perceived well, but he didn't like mean it. He just didn't say something the best way he could. He said it very short and, like, open to interpretation. That, that's the way to say it. And so people were like, whoa, Drew Brees, you better fucking, like, come out with an issue, like a statement, and clear that up. Yeah. yeah, it was something like that. He got a little backlash. But, yeah, he's a badass. He's so good. Breezy. Oh, my God. Love mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Wait, speaking of AI. Okay. You need to watch the Lex Friedman episode of Joe Rogan. Okay. He is the leading AI uh, scientist at MIT. Oh, shit. Good old buddies with Eric Weinstein and, yeah. uh, and um, fucking Tesla. What's his name? Elon Musk. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I blanked for a second. Yeah. <laughs> best friends with those guys. And he's brilliant. Yeah, that. He, I'm, I'm halfway through the episode and he's blowing my mind. But the funny thing about him is he's not like Musk. He, he's a super genius, but he's very, he, he's, he acts normal. You know, like all those super smart, super smart people. Those women and men are like a little, they're weird. Yeah, sure. They're yeah. an alien. They're, they're on another level. You know, those. Straight up weird. Yeah. They have some social awkwardness. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Lex does not. He's a dude. He's a bro. He's like joking, hanging out, talking about mushrooms. Yeah. And he's like the leading guy, the leading guy. He was there. They brought up Neuralink. Have I told you about Neuralink? Yeah, we talked, we talked about that last episode. Watched, and then I watched The Upgrade. Mind blown, right? Mind blown. Guys, go fucking watch Upgrade and watch <laughs> that episode of Joe Rogan, and it's going to freak you out. Yeah. When the fucking, uh, uh, what is it called? STEM? When STEM tricks him into hacking it to get away from Aaron, but it's really to have its own autonomy so it doesn't have to have permission. I was like, oh my. They just ruined the movie for everyone. (laughs) They won't even, no. (laughs) It's so complicated. That's not even the biggest part. The end, I would say, I was like, yeah, I can't say it. You're right. When you texted me, you're like, are you serious? You know, I was like, just wait, just keep going. At the ending, I was like. Because at first you're like, oh, really? 
Yeah. And then you're like, uh, oh my god, that is so much worse. That is fucking goddamn. That is <laughs> way so worse. worse. I thought that was my worst nightmare. Never mind, this is. Yeah. It was mind blowing. And I think um, that's why I watched The Social Dilemma too. Or I think that's why Dylan and I decided to watch it because we were kind of on those conversations talking mm-hmm. about upgrade, neural link, Elon Musk, all of those things until we decided to watch The Social Dilemma. And my mind was also blown. Yeah. All of these people who are the creators or some of the behind the scenes masterminds to all of these massive incorporations, massive, they're the ones that are telling you, don't do it. Like, don't feed into it. Like, there are good parts to it, but it has turned into something much larger than what it was meant for. Yeah, and it's that's for sure. used for things that it wasn't meant for. And yeah. then they also talk about like, um, obviously teenage girls or not necessarily just girls, but everyone on body image and how they view themselves and all of these things and how social media has taken over that yeah. aspect with filters and all of these things. It's insane. You know um, how they're going to fix that? How? <clears throat> you take away likes. If you take away the seat that how many likes you can see, <clears throat> then it's no more. Then well, it's no more on Instagram where they took away like oh, I fuck can't you talking see, about it. like I can't see the number of people that have liked your pictures unless I go and I count each individual once. You can't do it. Are you sure? Yeah, go because look when I go to someone it says liked by it'll it'll name a couple friends and then it'll say a bunch more it'll say 70 more or 25 more then you haven't upgraded your instagram <laughs> updated your instagram because <laughs> no they got rid oh, of Oh, that's a recent one yeah so when i go to your instagram it will just say liked by lorenzo and others it doesn't give you a number oh I, you're correct you're right they did change that i did, uh, have seen that for people who are much more famous, let's say Kim Kardashian. If you look mm-hmm. at hers, hers says liked by Chloe and thousands of others. So they, they didn't take it away. It says thousands? Thousands of others. Verbatim, that's what it says. Thousands okay. of others. Okay. No, I actually, that's something. a good idea. Yeah. So you can have their status. So you're like, that's celebrity status and then normal people status. Yeah, exactly. No, that is, that is one thing that they, that was a good move. For sure. I agree. Completely agree. Um, but yeah. So, okay, I want to talk about something. Wait, wait, wait. I can't. I have to. One more thing. Oh my God. Okay, go. The Lex, the Lex Freeman episode. Oh, yeah. They bring up Neurolink, and he's like, oh, yeah, I was there two weeks ago when they tested it in two live pigs. That's what I had to say. They put him into the spinal columns of two pigs, and they talk about the exp- what happened. That's so scary. He's like, he was like, yeah, Elon was talking about like in five to 10 years, it'll do this, this, this. He was like, it'll be in someone like 21, like next year. And he's like, what? And he goes, I was just at the demonstration, blah, blah. And he goes, and he literally said, I am not associated with Tesla or anything, blah, blah. I was just there as a guest. He goes, yeah, they fucking did it. It fucking works. <laughs> and they went off to talk about that. And then they went on to talk about aliens. And this guy's so brilliant. The way he talks about aliens are like, Oh man, they're here. They're already here. Interesting. Okay, so go watch that episode. Okay. Lex Friedman. Lex Friedman. Okay, I'll watch it. I just finished um, the Miley Cyrus episode. That was pretty good. That was a good one. It was good. I like. She talks so much shit about her sister. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. No, it's dumb, blah, blah, like whatever she said. So I'm just very into psychology and the way people think and the way people handle different situations. And so I think that's why I enjoyed that episode so much. And she was on Call Her Daddy a few weeks ago or a month ago. So I listened to that episode too, where they talk a lot about um, therapy and the things that she does and how she works things out. And I think it's insane how her mind works, that she is a literal, literal, like little, little go-go train, like in her head. And she has to be doing something all the time. Like she's that yeah. much of a hard worker kind of thing. She's got a really big problem with um, other people's perceptions though. 
Yeah, she does. And Joe, you, I mean, you saw off. Joe Rogan told her like, he was like, stop. Why are you doing this? Like, right. why are like, you, why are you Googling yourself? Why? Like, who cares? Why are you looking at that? No one else's perception of you matters. Yeah. And she's like, I know what I can't stop. And that's such a big issue with everyone. It's not just celebrities. Celebrities no, for like sure. everyone else in that aspect, you know, they care what other people think, which is why we have these crazy body image um, dream goals and dreams because they care what people think. So they go to the extreme and do these things. Yeah. Wild. So Lex Friedman. Can you hear him snoring? Is he snoring too loud? <laughs> Uzo sleeping right there. No, no, I can't hear him. Did you put your ear up to the microphone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you didn't see that. <laughs> what do you mean? I didn't see it. <laughs> of course I fucking saw it. <laughs> I was hoping you were paying attention. <laughs> oh my god, I'm crying. Okay. <laughs> stupid. Oh man. Okay, so okay. mom, I don't know if mom told you about this. Okay, we talked about it though. We were texting. So mom called me the other day when she was making chicken parm. Mm-hmm. Chicken parmesan for you. And she goes, Presley, I had a you moment. And already I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? And she goes, I'm making chicken parmesan and I bought mozzarella. And I was like, mom, that's what you use. And she was like, no, that makes no sense. It's chicken parmesan. And I was like, mom, parmesan is supposed to go in the crust and they can like sprinkle some on top, but mozzarella is the melted cheese on the chicken. She was like, I don't believe you. Ask Dylan. I was like, Dylan's not here. She goes, ask Dylan's mom. I was like, she's not here either. She goes, well, who's there? I was like, Dylan's dad. She was like, go ask him. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then Italians, the way they say things, it, it's strange. That I mean, obviously it's the proper pronunciation of things, but it kind of, I don't know. I don't like it. How do they say mozzarella? Um, That one's like not as bad. It's like, they don't say uh, it's mozzarella or mo- mozzarella. I don't know however they say it. Oh but, yeah. You know I watched Jersey Shore. You know ricotta. The how did he say it? No. Okay, so I I used to say ricotta. Actually, I still do because I don't like the way they say it. <laughs> but they say ricotta. That's how it's supposed to be pronounced. Ricotta. Isn't there an R? R-I-G-O-T. Isn't that already a food? Isn't that already something? I don't know. Hmm. No idea. But they I've say seen they, that on, they I've seen that on a menu for sure. That they word. pronounce ricotta ricotta. Well. Why? Oh, whatever. That's, what that's, why? that's how we pronounce <laughs> it. <laughs> I've seen Jersey Shore. I've seen them talk about food. Yeah. Yeah. And the way they talk, I'm like, Okay, so to be fair, initially, when someone asks you that, you would say Parmesan cheese. Okay, first off, this is coming from someone who doesn't cook, so maybe, let, let me, dis- <laughs> disclaimer, someone who cooks will probably would immediately be like, well, you top it with Parmesan. But when you said that, I had to really think about it, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's for sure mozzarella. Same with like pizza, or reminding me of like a Philly cheesesteak, or like that. Not a Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> Well, not a Philly cheese. I'm trying to think of the, uh, like, a meatball sub. Yeah, mozzarella. Yeah. Mozzarella. I was trying to, like, really think about the cheese, and I was like, it's white, and the taste, oh, yeah, it is mozzarella. It's definitely yeah. not Parmesan. Because if you, okay. that's a lot of Parmesan to put if you did it like that. Yeah. But first of all, mom said she had a me moment. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and she told me that story. <laughs> but little did you know she was right. She just didn't believe it because she was like, it smells Parmesan. <laughs> That's really funny that she bought the right one on accident. Yeah, she did. She was like, because if she, because if she did buy Parmesan, then she would have just made like, it with the Parmesan. And I'd be like, I wonder if it would taste good. I'd be like, tastes great. I don't know. If you like Parmesan, <laughs> you'd like it. Like, I love Parmesan. I, I'd fucking my entire it. life never used Parmesan until you and I were in recovery together. Really? Yes, oh, my whole life. So much better. Oh my god! I I know that now. Oh so good. <laughs> but I've never really been a big cheese person until so recently. I, yeah, so I hated cheese 
when I went off to college, my whole life growing up, hated cheese, never ate cheese. And then I went to college and all we, the one thing we always had in the sorority house was cheese sticks, always, regardless. And so I- Yeah, but it's not like good cheese. <laughs> they are taste good though. They taste it's, good though, yeah. It's mozzarella. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. All right. Well, if she didn't get the right stuff, I would have just pulled out some string cheese. So I sat there and I ate a cheese stick a day for two weeks. And by the end of two weeks, I craved them. I <laughs> hated them. I hated them at first. I thought they were the most disgusting thing ever. At the end of two weeks, I craved them. So now I know if I ever dislike something, if I do it every day for two weeks, I will love it. I don't know if that's I'm true. Convinced, did you I, hate? Did you hate it the whole time, or like after a few days, you're like, "Oh, these are actually pretty fucking good." Um, I would say it took about a, a week to actually start liking it, but not like a lot. I was like, "Okay, this isn't bad." A week and a half, I was like, okay, these are good. And then by two weeks, I wanted one every fucking day. <laughs> I was like, I need a cheese stick. I need I, four cheese sticks. Like, okay. <laughs> I was never a cheese person before, but I always like cheese or string cheese, the cheese sticks. No, never. That's an exception. Well, I thought that was so gross. Really? They're always so good. That's like cubes of cheese. Uh, like, I, I still don't like yellow cheese. Let me put that out there. I'm more of a fan of white cheese. But I, to this day, do not like yellow cheese. Cheddar, get that shit off my burger. Like, I What about, <laughs> oh, but what about, like, uh, cube cheddar with, like, Ritz crackers and summer sausage or something? No. Hunting. I think it's disgusting. Nah. When mom uh. asks me, so I like melted yellow cheese, though. I like nachos and, like, queso. Mm. But when mom would ask me for parties when she was making queso to cut the cheese, I would gag. I couldn't do it because I hated it. <laughs> I'm also very picky with food, so that's just me. But uh, yeah, that's true. I eat, I'm not. Yeah, exactly. There's very little that I. I mean, I'm not a big fan of onions, raw onions. But if they're cooked or grilled or steam, not steam, grilled or or cooked, right? Onions. Yeah, sauteed. But anything else? Yeah, sauteed. Okay, so I want to tell you about something. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Dylan listens to a history podcast, and he uh -huh. told me about this literally yesterday, and I was like, oh my god, I have to tell my brother. <laughs> so it's something called Heart Island, and it's an island that is in between, so like Manhattan and Long Island. So the Bronx are like right here, right here. And so this is Long Island, and I'm, like, right here. So mm -hmm. the island is in between these two fingers. Okay. So it's really tiny. It's a mile long, hmm. 0.33 miles wide. Okay. So very tiny island. So he's telling me, like, where it is, all this stuff. And then he tells me that this island is owned by the city, and it is specific – to burying unidentified people and that this island is the largest burial ground in the country. There are over really? a million people buried there on this tiny island. <clears throat> and they haven't run out of spots yet? So um, they started burying people there in the 1860s, unidentified people. That's where they would take them to bury them. Well, then over the years, obviously hurricanes would hit, all this stuff, and people would get washed away. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's what I was thinking. And then they would start, like, obviously burying more people. Well, then in the 90s, I don't remember exactly, like, what years, but when AIDS was a thing. When mm. no one knew what AIDS was, when AIDS became an epidemic, basically. Um, AIDS, yeah. Yeah, like 80s, 70s. 80s, early 90s. Okay. <clears throat> um, then it became a place where they would only bury AIDS people because they believed that mm. even when they were dead, that they would still be able to spread the virus. So then it was an AIDS burial ground. And now COVID hits, and that's where they bury the unidentified COVID patients. It's an unidentified burial ground. 
That's what it is. And the, mm. I asked Dylan, I was like, why don't they cremate them? I don't get yeah. it. Because some people are identified later. And so they have to go exhume the body from that island uh, and then give it to the family so they can do a proper burial, um, mm. cremation, whatever. And they thought that that was like the most respectful because they don't know what religion, what they believe in, etc. And some religions you can't cremate. Some yeah. whatever. You're not supposed to cremate if you're Catholic. Yeah, exactly. I mean, now it's like more accepted, but in the Bible, you're not supposed to. It's not accepted if you're going to Orthodox. It's not. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so he told me about this island, and my mind was freaking <clears throat> blown. Yeah, I've never heard of that place. Okay. So it's owned by the city. So no one can like go just on your own. Like you have to get a permit from the city to actually go. But the people who do work there, they say that it's very haunted and they hear a lot of things. They see things. And when you look it up online, all you see are like these massive <clears throat> trenches because they do massive burials. And yeah, dig a big hole and just... Yeah. And apparently before they used to not put the bodies in anything, but now they put them in boxes. Hmm. But the people oh, yeah. way back when had like <clears throat> disintegrated into the earth. And so those aren't there. So they just keep burying people on top of each other. Oh my God. I go to kill my mind around it. <laughs> uh, I've never heard of that place. Me either. And mm -hmm. over a million people have been buried there. But it makes really good sense that New York did that because New York is all about uh, real estate. It's all about land. Where are you, where are we, what are we going to do with all these fucking bodies? Be like, just fucking see that island way over there, man? I would all of them burn over them. there. All of them. I would burn them. I would burn them too, but whoever made that decision, that it, 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 there is a chance to identify the body and then it's against our religion. That they were really thinking of people. Yeah, they were. I'd fucking burn them. I'd fucking throw them in the ocean, feed them to the sharks. I, okay. I just burn them. <laughs> okay, grind them up. You grind them up, and you actually use them as fertilizer in actual farm. And then it grows into plants, and then cows eat the plants, and then you eat the cow, and it's a circle of life. <laughs> I don't think I like That's that. That's a bad one. That's like a cannibal. <laughs> I don't think I like that. Have you seen Strange Wilderness? <laughs> no. Holy shit. You need to watch that movie. It's an older movie, but it's super funny. Steve Zahn isn't it? <clears throat> and uh, he has a super shitty nature, nature wildlife show. Yeah. And he only has it because he inherited it from his dad that was a badass and he died. Well, like the past few years, ratings have been going down and the network's about to cancel him. So he goes on to the one quest to save his show and he tries to uh, find Bigfoot in South America. He ends up, he does find Bigfoot. It's fucking hilarious. But uh, along the way, <clears throat> the guy that's taking him through the jungle, he gets eaten when he's trying to cross this river by piranhas, eaten alive. And they're so upset and they lost and they're so mad. And so <laughs> the, the guy's name was Dick. And so what they end up doing is killing a whole bunch of the piranhas, like fishing for them. And then they eat them. And while they're eating the piranhas, they're like, fuck you, piranhas. You ate Dick. You killed him our friend, our guide, and then they keep eating and they keep yelling as they're eating the fish. And then one of the guys goes, hold up. Actually, it's Farva. Farva from uh, Super Troopers yeah. and Tacoma FD. He's in that movie. Okay. And Yeah, and he's an alcoholic and it's fucking hilarious. He quits every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> I haven't had him. He's like, I've been sober for six hours now, guys. And <laughs> you see him with a beer later on. Um, there's a whole bunch of funny people in that, in that one. Um, Jonah Hill's also in it. Uh, Justin Long's also in it. Yeah, yeah. it's fucking really funny. Uh, but yeah, at one point, they're like, wait, hold up, guys. The fish ate dick, right? We're eating the fish, right? Are we eating dick right now? And they're like, <laughs> ah! And they start throwing up and getting all gross. That's what it reminded me of. I was like, wait, hold up. Maybe we shouldn't. Hold up. Um, so, yeah, crazy. Has anyone, has any group been allowed to investigate there? Like, Ghost Adventures, they're special. They get to do everything. They no. go to, like, islands that no one has been to. Hmm. Nobody. That's fucking cool. Wait, you said permits. Permits to do what? I, you need a city permit to go there. So, obviously, you have to have a reason for the city to approve it. Okay. I well, when you said permit, it made me think, like, 
you could just pay and go so i don't think so i think you have to like submit something and then they have to it's called heart island heart like your heart or h-a-r-r-t h-a-r-t yeah, I was, you know, I was yeah, trying to spell yeah. it. I would start saying it halfway through it. H A H A R T T. H A R T, like that. Yeah. Heart. Heart. Is it named after someone? Heart Island. I have no idea. I I didn't. I just looked up pictures and I was like, I don't like that. What are the pictures look? Is it just a flat, barren? Um. There's. It's got like trees there. everywhere. No, what is it? No, no, it's barren. Is it rocky? Like the like the the shores, yeah. New York, where you live? Yeah, it's pretty rocky. Um, it's all it like, like no grass, there's no nothing. And then you just see like a building. I saw like a building in one of them, but I was mainly focused on the massive trenches they were building. So all these bodies to go. Wait, but you said that they don't want to bury them or burn them because in case they get identified later. So if they get identified later, they like got a lot A, like, okay. And they move the tractor and there's like 50 people in there and like, start picking, start looking, bro. Honestly, or do they, they like line have, them up or I don't know. They have to have a system where okay, they this like, reminds me know where a person is, like for a specific case. I have no idea. This reminds me of a really bad story right. that I've never told you. And I actually thought of yesterday when I was on the boat with Lorenzo. Okay. Uh a long time ago. Do you remember when I worked at Benny Hanna? Yeah, of course. Okay, I worked with, uh, I became friends with this guy named, uh, I don't know if he wants the story told. We'll say his name is, uh, <laughs> I don't know, Gary. Well, he lived in one of the smaller towns uh, west of San Antonio, like Divine, Uvalde, Sabinal, Castroville, all in that area. His family is very prominent in that town. He has like five brothers. And so uh, we'd go out to his property and get fucked up and drink and hang out and party and do whatever on occasional times. Well, sometimes he would ask us uh, to help them hunt. And we were like, okay, yeah, we love hunting. And he was like, no, 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 no. Like, we're not like... No, no, no. He's we like, just hunt. come. We hunt people. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but so we went to his property and he had a, a farm, like a big farm. And he was like, the deer eat all the crops. Mm -hmm. So tonight we're going to go out and kill deer. I was like, okay. The way they do this... <laughs> is we all get in the truck everyone rolls down your window and then he drives fast as fuck through the fields the ones without the crops at the time just all over the place because he knows it very well with spotlights on the top of his truck rack chasing down deer like and the deer's trying to like going left going right and he's following it and then why we're like boom chick, chick, boom then <laughs> <laughs> there's more <laughs> this is the part that reminded me of your story because we haven't gotten to that part why would that remind me of new york <laughs> i didn't know we pick up the deer we throw it in the bed of the truck and we do this all night so there's a lot so then we go into the spot at, like he's like let's go to the back of the property and we go and there's a big hole a hole in the ground a hole in the ground. I watched that movie last night. <laughs> a hole in the ground. A big one. Like the size of a car, maybe 15 feet down, 20 feet. It was f a big fucking hole. What the fuck? Big. With a whole bunch of bodies. We were just throw the deer in there. Like, big, 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 big. He took all the ones that he could for meat. And then also for their ranch hands, he would give them meat. But the ones that she couldn't save the meat and they were fucked up and there were a lot of deer. There were just too many. In the hole. In the hole. In the hole. And then, so we were just throwing bodies and they are burning this. It's just a giant hole. Giant hole. And they're just burning them. Then, um, like, he, they, would, they wouldn't burn them all the time. It would be like once a week, right? A scheduled burn. Because it was always like trash. Anything in the fucking, like, um farm ranch that needed to be went in that hole and was burned okay well until that time like we would spend the night there i actually never saw it uh, burning or on fire but at night then you hear all the fucking coyotes like all of them in that fucking area yeah because and i can't do a coyote noise because <laughs> presley it sounded so freaky and i like coyotes and i like them but it i was like how many are like there's just, that's not a pack of 30. There's like hundreds of coyotes. He's like, like, oh yeah, dude. 
He goes, we've gone out there and you see just masses of them crawling down that, that they can. And some of them fall and some of them can't get out and they die in there. But a lot of them can get out and they just devour. It's like a slaughter. They, we kill them all or they kill them all. I went one time. <laughs> Throw them in the hole. And then until that burn, every night the coyotes are just going down there and getting what they can. It was Sounds intense like a to see. Nightmare. Bah, and then like a hole, and then cover them up, just like you said, hard island. I didn't say that. I didn't know what you did like it. <laughs> I, had to, I hadn't remembered that in years, and I actually on the boat. I don't know why we were talking about something. I was like, yeah, oh my fuck? god. <laughs> <laughs> I have it written down too. And that, that's why when you said the giant hole, and you had me watch a hole in the oh, ground last enough. night. It worked out. It was perfect. Yeah. Okay. So I gave my brother a list of scary movies to watch because I was on a binge for like a week. And I think I gave you like seven. <laughs> no, you gave me four. I gave you Host. I gave you A Hole in the Ground. I gave you The Lodge. I gave you. Oh, I didn't. The Lodge. That's not on my list. Yeah. The Lodge. Rental and Vivarium. Rental, Vivarium, and there was another one. That's why. That was that. Okay. The other one would be six. Um. So, yeah, that whole the you, holy ground you, or Hard <laughs> Island. Where do you want to leave? <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with Hard Island. <laughs> that's cool. I want to look it up now. Yeah, look it up. I was. That's like, really unusual that that's that a city like that needs a special needs a unique niche because how many million people live there and fucking. All their space is taken. Um, and how many there. cemeteries do you see in the, semi, in the city? In the city? Yeah, because I would think it's, it's like a premium price. I don't think I've ever seen one in the city. So where That's are they? Is it. everyone being cremated? No, they're either upstate, Long Island. I'm sure they're... So if, if you live in the city and you die, your cemetery is probably like 45 minutes away? Yeah, I'd assume. I don't know. Hmm. I, I, I've never seen one. I'm sure there are some, but I, I personally have never seen them. How so. many people a year do you think die inside of Central Park? In Central Park? In, isn't it huge? Isn't it really big? Um, yeah, I mean, it's big. Isn't it like five know, by like two blocks at least? It's way more than that. Yeah, that, for sure people are dying in there. And then they're going to Hard Island. Yeah, probably. Do people go kill themselves well, in there? Like I, in that Japanese forest? Have we talked about that before? Yes, we've talked about it. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know all these scary stories because then I would never <laughs> fucking go there. <laughs> I would oh, never man. go there on a leisurely <laughs> trip. I would go there to ghost hunt. But I also don't do that alone, so... <laughs> I wonder if people have gone to Hart Island or if they could do a documentary or like interview, like what you were saying, like, how do you know that the people say that? Are there any interviews about past employee of past employees that have worked there? Yeah. So Dylan told me this and it was on his history podcast. Oh, badass. And that it was from people who have been to Hart Island because they were working, they were doing something. Mm. The city that was a whole episode. Yeah. Or a, yeah. Part of one. That's dope. And that's apparently really cool. the only one that's like bigger, the only burial ground that's bigger than that is like India. It's um I was guessing like Japan. Oh, really? And it's like five million people, but it's like a Man. massive, but it's a massive space. Mm. This is a mile. A mile by a third of a mile. Three, three miles. That that's a that's yeah, that's really tiny, small. Tiny <clears throat> yeah. Like I <laughs> When he told me that, I was like, a million, over a million people, over a million. And then it's like, when you think about all these pandemics, then it's like AIDS. Only AIDS people were buried there then. Not even the unidentified, just AIDS people. And then COVID happened, and it's COVID unidentified people. And so there. is it only, right now, only COVID? No. Or is it COVID and unidentified? It's COVID and unidentified. But when oh, AIDS okay. was happening, it was only AIDS. And apparently the first kid who, um, who died of AIDS, the first kid who died of AIDS because that island was solely for AIDS people, he had to go be buried there 
and he's the only person on the island out of the million plus people to have a tombstone. Has a name. It doesn't wow. even have his name. So it's not his name. Oh, really? It's just a marker. Dylan said it said like some initials on it, but it doesn't have like his name. <clears throat> wow. Wow. That's really cool. That was a cool episode. Damn. Is it just audio or is it, uh, you can watch it as well? Um, I don't know. I'll have to ask him, but it's called like every episode is like the history <clears throat> of blah, blah, blah or something. So I'll have to ask him when it's called and I'll send it to you. That's cool. Damn, yeah. That's really interesting. Like today. Heart Island. Today he like picked me up from work and we were on the way home and he was listening to one about prisons and that's like. Prison. Oh yeah. man. I bet there's some crazy shit about prison, especially the structure alone, the systems and the privatized. That's what Texas runs on. Yeah. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Privatized prisons, a lot of money in it. But yeah. Time. So then um, also on Hard Island, people from Rikers that they would get buried there. I was like, oh shit, Rikers got some wow. people. Damn, you're right. I bet it is an awesome fucking haunted place. I know. A super I creepy one. So I went to work and I was like, guys, listen to what I found out. <laughs> And, is then, dope. and they were like oh my god can we like go there like the ones who are really into ghosts mm -hmm. like, oh my god i'd love to go there i was like you can't you need a city permit how do we get there like i don't know tell them we're doing some hospital shit like <laughs> we gotta get there. yeah you maybe could but i don't know if you deliver a body sign up to deliver a body one from the hospital be know. in the truck with the delivery I mean, they have to take, like, a ferry or something to get there. I'm sure from your hospital, with all the COVID patients, a lot of them are going there. Yeah. Probably. Somehow you could tag along or be there for the day. <clears throat> go on your off day, but as long as you go with, with the driver, then you can go. Sh shit. I don't know if I would like I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe. I don't know if I'd like uh, to be in a truck that is full of bodies. You're yeah, you're talking about going to an island and you're going to be standing on a million corpses. Okay, yes, but listen to that. Standing. If you're, no. Without without even wanting to, you're grave dancing. Okay. Oh. <laughs> but I'm not meaning to. It's not intentional. I'm not like, I'm not Heather. like, who did it? Heather. <laughs> Heather. Like Heather. Who's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. like, no. Um, uh, well. So, so the, I don't know. I would think that if I was in this truck, because during COVID, this is like, I, I told my brother about this. I don't think I ever said it on the podcast, but it was actually a very um, humbling, very intense thing to see where we had trucks, massive, massive trucks lined up outside of the hospital that would get filled with bodies <clears throat> every single day, refrigerated trucks that would literally would get filled with bodies every single day. They had four or five. Everybody. Because because your hospital could not hold the amount of dead bodies, correct? Yeah. So they, they needed them. Up. They were full. Yeah. Your mortuary or, or, or your didn't hold that amount of people, so they yeah. created um, like makeshift morgues outside. So they had to. T that's what I'm saying. Take the bodies. Go to yeah, Hard Island, maybe. Them. They would hold them there every like every day, and then at the end of the day, they'd take them off. Yeah. And that's then what I'm at that point funerals funeral homes they weren't like doing funeral services mm. so if you had a plot then the i forget what they're called the funeral guys to like a funeral director I'm funeral assuming. director yeah so they'd come in hearse and they'd load the body into the hearse and then they'd take them off if they had a specific place wow. like, if they already it was already set up mm -hmm. which i, I can imagine <clears throat> none of them were it's COVID. Some of these people died within two weeks of getting sick. Yeah. Like, can you, that's what I'm saying. Like, no one's prepared for this. It's not like, oh, she was older. We kind of expected it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Which I'm sure a lot of them are. I'm not saying that's not any more or less. Uh, right. Well, so now um, they actually opened up another COVID floor on in our hospital. So we Is have on one. <clears throat> so we have one, and now we have two. There's only 10 covid patients in the hospital right now but oh, wow. i there has been a rise in certain areas and so in new york on long island in manhattan so i think mm -hmm. that they're just trying to prepare prepare that's that's good yeah and they can only like this <clears throat> especially they want to like seclude it with little staff as possible 
and so they're like spreading them out kind of so like the staff only has to deal with like certain amounts of patients certain number of patients but anyways so apparently the majority of these covid patients that are coming into the hospital now are all like under 30 like very young people uh the people that are <clears throat> refuse to distance and not social gather with all the rules yeah so. them us <laughs> our age group yeah. yeah that's what it is because people <clears throat> not me because i have no immune system <laughs> but people our age they they shouldn't be getting sick they're the ones that are the strongest right <clears throat> but it's but, the decisions yeah. that ends you up there yeah right it's, oh, it's shit. crazy but apparently they're not like super super critical but they're to the point that they need to be in the hospital mm -hmm. but they're not being you, intubated and stuff like that i've been hearing this on from a few sources have they been finding correlation between how bad uh certain covid patients are and vitamin d levels I've heard that <clears throat> like something like 95, 96% of critical COVID patients had an extreme uh, deficiency in vitamin D and ones that got over it really quick and like beat it pretty easily had a proper amount of vitamin D in them. And so that led a lot of places. I don't remember where this was, what hospital or what, whatever country where this comes from, but they're like, take vitamin D, be outside. You need to have all this stuff because for some reason, people that don't have it, they can't fight it people that do have it, they're not getting it. Or they're like in a day or two, they kick it, which some people actually do, which is insane. Right. I, but have you heard anything about that? I haven't heard that specifically. Um, I know that they, I know that there is a very strong correlation with diabetes, like through mm. the roof, a massive really? correlation to diabetes and COVID and how well you're doing. Um, or even contracting it in the first place, like you're more prone if you're diabetic. Um, but I know that they did come up with a regimen of like specific medications that they would give to somebody that apparently worked very, very well. But I don't remember if that included like giving them vitamin D or- For someone with diabetes? No, for someone with COVID, just COVID. Oh, I thought you meant something. I thought you meant a diabetes related COVID case. Yeah, no, no, no. Just <clears throat> just COVID period. COVID. And they came up with something that actually was working pretty well. Well, I knew they were messing around with a lot of different steroids. And they were a saying we know steroids. they're like, we know steroids work, but we're just trying to pinpoint which ones are the best. Yeah, exactly. So they finally pinpointed it and it was like three medications that they gave in a specific order. And like really? in dosage, yeah. So whatever it was, I don't remember the names of the medications. They're they're long medication names. <laughs> it's yeah, medical <laughs> long, yeah. Yeah, but at that point, when they came out with that, like on the news and articles and all of that stuff, we weren't COVID anymore. Our hospital, so it wasn't as pertinent to me mm -hmm. at the time because I wasn't seeing it every day. And honestly, at that time too, I was very. I, I needed a break from like COVID. I needed a break yeah. from seeing it. I, I needed it. So I briefly saw those articles and then I was like, okay, I need to kind of get that not in the back of my head, but I need to clear my head mm -hmm. because that like, that was a major toll to see every day. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine that for people that don't know, we had our surgery in January, our liver transplant surgery uh you were here for about two and a half months recovering you went back home and went straight back to work straight back into a hundred percent covid positive hospital yeah you said what 800 beds 600 over 800 beds yeah every single patient was covid positive that's intense and you came back into the middle of it so people are already used to <clears throat> the procedures the extra yeah. protection all the all the i'm sure extra procedures you have to go through in protocol they were so used to it and um i don't i haven't said this on the podcast but um during mm -hmm. while i was in the hospital i was having major troubles with my oxygen saturation and it had to do with like a medication that i was on that they had given me for pain after the surgery um and it was a side effect from it 
So from then on, I was like constantly monitoring my O2 sats because they just weren't at a hundred, which they should be for somebody my age. They should be for somebody your age, um, older people, or even like above 95. It's like very normal. It's very normal for it to fluctuate between there. But for me to be at like 90, 91, even 90. That's low. Yeah. Why am I there in the hospital? I was in the 80s constantly. So I was on oxygen 24 seven. But until like I finally got off that medication and stuff. And so my O2 saturation is something that I watched very closely after surgery. Um, and then when I got back to work, my already my lung capacity isn't what it used to be at all at all (laughs) so to go to work and have to wear an n95 mask properly fitted sealed completely to your face with a mat a disposable mask on top of that and you're wearing long sleeve you're wearing double clothing you're wearing two pairs of scrubs you're wearing scrubs and then paper scrubs on top and then you have gowns on most of the day and then you have a shield over your face and you have double gloves and you have all these things. I couldn't fucking breathe. <laughs> I bet. Especially because right when you went back home, you only had two weeks before you started back at the hospital. Our stamina and endurance was not there. Like a hundred percent. We just got clear to be able to lift shit over 10 pounds. <laughs> I <was laughs> that you went back to work. Carry, I couldn't even carry my dog. That's like... <laughs> I literally, I couldn't carry a gallon of milk. I couldn't carry my freaking dog. That's how severely compromised our bodies were. And not even that, like, we couldn't. The doctor said, you're not allowed to. Like, because you could rupture, you could do something. Yeah. Like you don't want to tear all that incision back up and No, it was um, inside because of hernias. Or- because <clears> it just that would have been bad. Cut our entire core. Yeah. That's what it was. That's mainly why. And so to sit on your ass for that long, Mm -hmm. it was, oh my God, it's still rough. Like I've been trying to work out and (laughs) it's rough. (laughs) My, I literally went for like a two mile run the other day and um, I'm doing pretty good though. I'm doing good, but I can't fucking breathe one and two because my lung capacity is shit and two. I wear my Apple Watch, obviously. <clears throat> my heart rate, I think I told you this the other week. My heart rate, it got up to like 180, and I was like, I'm going to die. Like, <laughs> this should be happening. <laughs> uh, that is awfully high, but <clears throat> it's not out of the question. It's not no, alarmingly I, high. I'm pushing my body, I'm exerting my body to somewhere that it hasn't been in six months literally yeah. like I haven't pushed myself to that point and I know some of you are probably like oh my god she only ran two miles guys I haven't done shit for six <laughs> months more than six months if you're not doing shit, Our surgery was January yeah tell me how that feels <clears throat> yeah so yeah and then even then I'll like start walking and usually um when I run like your heart rate should still stay elevated uh once you like stop it's supposed to, it's supposed Mm -hmm. to keep burning calories and mine, but usually it drops a little. So I'd be at 180 and I would just like stop running and like walk for a little bit. And it'd be like 179, 178. And I'm like, God damn it. It's supposed to go away now. (laughs) After a few minutes, like a minute or two, you should see a noticeable effect. Yeah, definitely. But I didn't want to walk too much. So I was like, okay, back on my little run. Also, Mimosa and I have been going bike riding, guys. You should definitely post that picture. Did you post that? I posted it on my Instagram. On your stuff. On my um, yeah. I'll post it on the Epping Priceless Instagram because the picture is beautiful. Yeah, it is a good picture. <laughs> Love it. So, yeah. Has she been doing – so she hasn't tried to jump out or anything yet? No, not at all, which has really shocked me because of how – jumpy she is when other people walk by when dogs walk by she just wants to play with them she's still a puppy like i get it um but she's just interested and so when i first took her on the bike ride i was like oh my god i really hope no one walks by (laughs) because i don't know what's gonna happen yeah and then um we didn't really see anyone the first the first time 
and then Dylan came out to like take a little video of us and then she was like excited wanted to jump wanted to like sit up and I was like okay I don't like this <laughs> the second time we did see people but like she didn't do anything and I was like okay the real test is when we see dogs that's gonna be the big test yeah our third day or not our third day yeah I guess our third day our third time going we passed by so many dogs so many people and nothing she just sat there she fucking loved it i was like is she leashed to it so she can't jump out no she's very tightly <clears throat> well, that's good to it she has a very i think her her span is this much from the carrier to her harness that's how much like that's good because i don't want her going anywhere no yeah i agree that's good but yeah that's really cool your bike is badass too i hadn't seen your bike really I remember no. I told you about it, that I couldn't, that I was having some difficulties with it, but. <laughs> yeah, the expression, you, you never, what is it? What? Well, I, you don't know the expression. Uh, <laughs> when they say, <laughs> when they say something, it's like, yeah, it's like riding a bike. You never forget, but you did. Okay, so first, let me just start off by saying I learned how to ride a bike at a later age. I was nine. Most people learn how to ride when they're like four or five, okay? But I was nine. And I learned how to ride a bike, and it was great and all. And then I didn't ride a bike all throughout high school. Didn't ride a bike all throughout college. So it's been about 10 years since I have ridden a bike. And then I got on my bike, and I had a lot of issues. <laughs> I don't get it. Like... I haven't ridden a bike in, in a long ass time and I can still, I know I can still ride a bike. Okay, you think that. That's what I thought too. No, I know that. No, you think that. You get on there, you pedal aggressively to carry your momentum and you balance. Okay, so that was my issue. It was the starting. Once I started, I was fine with the balance. Like I wasn't falling over, but it was the starting that I like needed to pedal faster. And at first, I was well, scared. Duh. Really fast. <laughs> and I was like, oh, we, nope. I needed to, like, pedal. Then I got the hang of it, guys. I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, make sure you got it down before you put mimosa in there. No, exactly. And that's what I told mom. I was like, mom, I'm not going to do it until I'm, like, very comfortable me riding the bike. And mm. even then, I was having so many issues going up hills. Because, again, my muscle mass is nothing. Like, it used to be. And just my muscles, my strength in general. So I was having so much trouble going up hills. And I was like, okay, I need to like really work on this. And then there's this hill that like I have not been able to get up literally since I got my bike. And I would try a little bit every day and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And I finally did it the other day. And I was so proud of myself. Good job. Now you can start doing it faster. Yeah, I could do it faster. And with mimosa. Okay. I didn't think mimosa would affect the bike I, of course I she does lie. she affects it a lot <laughs> of course well first off she weighs like what 35 pounds fuck off she weighs 13 what 13 no way yeah she weighs like 12 point something and i rounded up mm, i thought she was 14 some no yeah because g is like 16 was 14 i think so no <laughs> I, I think so, so. No. Okay, but anyways, and then also she's over the front, like where she's where you're carrying the weight. It's in front yeah. of the handlebars. So yeah, you, you're gonna definitely feel it, especially yeah. steering. I feel a big difference. It's not even <clears> the steering. It's it's really just the weight of the bike. Well, that's I what I'm saying. But like when you're weight. steering back and forth, you can feel yeah. that it's not quick. Right. <clears throat> you got forty pounds in front of you. Well, we're having fun. I'll post the picture. But Scotch went on the boat yesterday. Holy shit! Or two days ago. Yes, Pause the board. <laughs> Pause the board. He did really good, too. I was shocked, honestly. Well, not shocked, because I figured he would be good. Um, but he just looks so fucking majestic. <laughs> he he loves it out there. Life. He loves it. And I didn't tell you this. So we took him out there, and first off, his leash is fucking... Hold on, it's right there. I can get it. His leash is badass. It's like a wakeboarding rope, like a ski rope. Yeah. And it literally says on there, pause the board. I know you can't read that. Right. There, there you go. Pause the board. But yeah, he did really good. He got on the boat. He was a little nervous um, anytime I wasn't there. Yeah. Like one time, uh, some 
uh, assholes, they, <clears throat> a trash bag fell off their boat, and they, a plastic bag, and they just let it float off. And I was like far away. I was like, all right, when it comes close to me, I'm going to jump in and go swim and go get it. Hold scotch. And so he said he like whined the whole time really bad and he wanted to like go after me, but he's fucking like 10 pounds. You just hold him by his handle on his life jacket and he's not going anywhere. Exactly. I really wanted to test it. Well, like the leash when we are, when I'm driving, I have the leash on him and then it's uh, connected to my backpack, which I keep in the captain's chair. And so the furthest he can go is he can sit in the back seat if he wants, which is, that's where he sat by himself when we were riding. Mm-hmm. Um, but he can't jump over. Like he cannot get up top. Right. But then when I'm stopped or the engine's not, when the engine's not in gear or no, I'm sorry. When the engine's not even on, as soon as I turn it off, I uh, let him off. And then he goes to the bow, to the stern, all the sides and he and can jump over. Like jump off? He can for sure jump off, but he didn't. No, I'm saying he didn't try. Yeah. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. The only time he he didn't like it is when I would like jump in, and wow. then he really was like, and I just tell him no. But then I I blew up a tube, uh, and I put him in the tube with me, and we were floating out in the lake. He didn't care. Was that a fly in here? No, it's a fly. It's a fly. <laughs> okay, I was like, I saw it's something driving me insane. But yeah. Oh, and then we were on the boat, and uh, Lorenzo was sitting at the back, and Scotch like started acting really weird, and he like crouched down and like went behind Lorenzo on the very back of the boat where the ladder is. I was like, what is going on? Something, something's wrong with him. And I, I went back there and he like ran back and jumped in the boat on the, like inside. And he peed, he peed on the very back where the ladder is, where the indention is. All I had to do was pick up the water and splash it and splash into the lake. I was like, damn, that was good. He didn't, I don't know if he knew that's where, but he had seen me go in and out of the boat right there at the ladder. Yeah. And maybe he just thought back here better than anywhere in there because he'll get mad if I pee in there. Yeah, exactly. He probably was like, where's the spot that he'll get the least mad? <laughs> no, literally, I was like, good boy. I told him. I didn't know what he was doing because I, yeah. I, he looked like he was like, it literally, like, he thought I was going to spank him because he was like, was like, what is he doing behind Lorenzo? And then we moved and he, he jumped around and I saw a little bit of pee there. I was like, oh, perfect, bro. That's where you're going to go. Yeah, literally. Oh, what a good dog. Exactly. So he did really good. Yo, yo, my eyebrows are on fleek. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny that she did that. <laughs> yo, I, oh God, I was so mad at myself. I knew it was going to happen. I knew it, but I was like, it needs to be done. And then now I, I fucked it up. I don't know how I fucked it up. I thought I did it right, but nope, I fucked it up. <laughs> it happens. Uh, we watched a uh, host and vivarium. I thought host was pretty good. I liked it. Um, I liked the idea of it. Um, uh, and you and I had the conversation, though. I don't think the Asian girl, uh, Gemma? Gemma, right? Jenna? Means, yeah. I don't know if, well, I just watched it with Colin uh, yesterday as well. Oh, last okay. night. That's why I know him. Yeah, uh, I didn't remember it that well from two weeks ago. Okay, so when you said you thought the main girl was already haunted. She is. I just watched it last night. She is. Okay, so if she's already haunted, I think that the Asian girl, what she said, just gave a mask to whatever ghost was already haunted, haunting the original. Mm. That's yeah, what Because I, mean. I think it came from her. I don't think it just came from Gemma. I think it came from that. But y'all should go check that out. It's a new scary movie that you told me to go watch. Mm-hmm. That is, which I, this is what I really liked about it. It was obviously filmed, started production and ended and put it out from the time that COVID's happened. Because in this scary movie, co- it's during COVID. And they all have masks and they're all Zooming because they can't be around each other. And then yeah. if they do a seance through Zoom and shit goes real fucking, real fucking wrong. Real wrong. Also, <laughs> real it's wrong. 57 minutes long. So not a big commitment. And oh yeah, it is very short. And it got a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which is crazy because horror movies don't do well on Rotten Tomatoes. How new is it though? Because that those ratings will go down. Oh really? Oh. Mm-hmm. They change. Which I, I didn't think know. Twenty twenty. But uh Obviously, yeah, it's you know what not this year. It, it it's probably it, they probably gave it so high because of that. I was just blown away by that fact that they put out a movie that they started and finished and put it out <clears throat> that fast during COVID. And it was good. Wait, it was really I'm good. Very confused. 
Oh, God, now what? Oh, release date, July 30th. It literally just came out. That's ridiculous. But it's, it's super new. <laughs> it's, a, it's good. I liked it. No, I was super confused because when you first look it up, you know how there's like the movies and then there's like a little bit about it? I don't know. Your phone it's, shows you different stuff, apparently. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, it says initial release December 4th, 2020. And I got so confused. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> is it the second I, one? I literally was just, no, I literally was just going on in my head and I was like, what's the date? Wait, we're in 2020, <laughs> right? Like, oh my God. And then I was like, wait, COVID happened just this year. Did they put it yeah. Anyway, then I scrolled, Jesus, Suzo. <laughs> and then I scrolled down and it says July 30th, so we're good. I, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know what happened. Oh, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I thought it was pretty creative. I really, really liked that. Well, first off, those bitches killed Teddy for no reason. They did not have to involve him. They did not have to involve him. He shouldn't have called back. They didn't have to involve him. It was like a girl's call. It was like a girl's thing. It was like the best. And someone was like, let's invite Teddy. No, they killed him. (laughs) Okay, so back to a hole in the ground, which I watched last night. I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was... I had so many questions. None of the, nothing was answered to me. No, I don't know what the fuck that hole is. Exactly. That's what I'm like, what's going on? Are they aliens, other creatures? I think it was supposed to be. How did like, she, how did she get away from the one that was in the hole that touched her arm with her claws and it turned into her? How did she get away from it? The little one threw her across the kitchen. Her son threw her like a rag doll. I thought so she physically. Did, I thought she did something to get away from her. It doesn't show it. It literally cuts to the next scene, and she's carrying her son running oh. outside of the hole. And oh. literally, Colin and I looked at each other like, "How did she get away from it?" <laughs> the, the one that's the size of her son threw her across the room to physically throw a hundred and thirty, forty pound woman across a room. Yeah, in the it takes extreme strength. So I was like. How'd she get away? I don't remember that part. Her claws were inside of her, inside of her leg, because she was crawling with the kid, remember? Yeah. And then she grabbed it, and then she turns it her. I thought it, like, showed her doing something, but I guess not. Did nothing. (laughs) Nothing. She did nothing. I just thought it was supposed to be more of, like, in Upside Down, like, in Stranger Things. It's, like, this, Mm -hmm. it's this other dimension and these creatures have the ability to kind of turn themselves into you and then take your body. It's like STEM. And then take your body and then they live as you. Yeah, but it's, okay, so there's so many questions about that. <laughs> I don't, is it another dimension? Are they animals from her, here on Earth that we've never known before? Are they demons? Are they, because it seems like very demonic evil, something about it. And it's like, do they get the opportunity? If they can take a kid, you can take their spot at Earth in, in actual and in, in live. Yeah. Like, I couldn't, that's what was frustrating. Well, I, I was like, know. what happened? Yeah, I don't know if it's more like demonic or if it's more like alien. I, I associated it with alien like only because there's a fucking hole in the ground. So something probably landed there. <laughs> yeah. And then something they- landed, like a comet or a uh, ship. A and there, there's a community down there. There's a whole bunch of them down there. Yeah, exactly. So that's just why I associate it with, with more alien stuff. But it could also go the whole demon spirit route because of the way the movie was portrayed. It didn't lead you to believe that they were aliens or anything. It makes me think that it's an intelligent move, what they're doing, because they only take out one at a time. It's an even so trade, fun. so no one will notice. No one would notice. That's what I'm saying. Like, if they can get a kid, then you go in as the kid. I'm like, okay, no one will notice. No one will notice. But if, because at any point, they're so strong, they can shape shift. They can just come out and fuck everyone up. Mm-hmm. So what's going on? Okay, wait. But can we talk about how the little kid was killing people? Wait, what do you mean? He was burying their heads in the ground. Oh, yeah. Why did he do that? 
Yeah, I don't know why he did that. Why he was burying their heads in the ground. I was thinking so the demons could like eat them. That's what he thought. He like put them in the ground and they could eat them. Huh. I don't know. That's what I, that was my opinion. I have no idea. <laughs> like he's putting them closer to his friends. What happens? Well, but he only buried their head, which was interesting. Because Colin and I talked about it when it happened. Okay, he injured his mom a little bit and then expected that he was going to be able to, oh, because he's so strong. That's what Colin said. Because he is that strong. I was like, dude, she's laying on the ground. He only dug a hole for her head. Puts her head under there. And he goes, yeah, and if he stands on her head, like puts his foot on her head, it, she'll die like that. I was like, oh, yeah. Because I was like, How? she could just push herself up like a push-up. But he thought but he's already dead. So She was not, though. Is and when... Not- Incorrect. I don't believe that. He didn't severely injure her to think that she was dead before that. She, he roughed her up for sure, but she dead? No. Conscious. I don't know. For her to come out and pull the old switcheroo on him when he's that strong. Yeah. That, that, that didn't, mm. There were a couple of things that I was like, hmm. And then the, the, the biggest thing was that there was no explanation for the whole fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I wish there was an explanation, but overall, I thought it was a good movie a good scary definitely movie. different Different. Yeah. the idea was wild and I was- then i loved vivarium loved vivarium that's a new favorite for me that vivarium? was a cool one okay so it's what's his name jesse eisenberg so the guy mm-hmm. in now you see me he plays um lex Luthor. facebook movie lex Luthor and the superman and the justice league yep amazing actor and amazing. the girl's really good too i forget her name i've seen yeah. her in a couple things mm-hmm so this movie is like the, the, how I described it to you, it is the ultimate dystopia. That is how I would personally yeah. describe it. If you could think of hell, this is like worse. It's ultimate isolation and then with annoyances and like, it's insane. When that, <laughs> when that the basis of a movie is they get trapped in a labyrinth of a neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And you don't know if they're dead, limbo, in a simulation, being hypnotized. You don't know. In the Matrix, they're in something that they can't get out of. And they can't get out of it. They can't get out of it. They can't get out of it. And then a fucking box appears, and there's a baby in it. And it says, raise the child, and you will be released. That's the fucking movie. <laughs> it's fucking really weird and really interesting. Really and cool. And get boxes of supplies <clears throat> with, like, food that's not food like it doesn't have taste but oh, that was so that's what immediately makes you think aliens it was that's what makes you because you're like they're giving them protein that will sustain their body but they don't know what shrimp tastes like the fr- the shrimp i was like oh hey they, they got shrimp that's pretty good well remember the strawberries and champagne in the first the champagne the and they're like thing. And they're like, this doesn't taste like, like the strawberries don't have any taste. And I was like, wait a second, that's weird. And then the kid went, when he imitates them, oh no, I did not like that. No, the first part, I was going to say that part. (laughs) When he doesn't get what he wants, and the first time he did that, I was like, whoa, okay, that just went to, how did Jesse Eisenberg not (laughs) take him out for like way sooner? I was mind blown. I was like, I would have murdered <clears throat> that child. Murdered. What, what I really like about the movie is, as you're watching it, like obviously, uh, don't get. I don't get into the habit of talking a lot during a movie. But I'm with a buddy. If I'm with someone, and we're like, we're smoking, and like, um, you know, we could pause it. That's a movie that during the whole time we'd be like, okay, pause. Let's take a hit, another hit. Okay, where do you think this is going? Because I we had so many theories of what was actually happening, like raise the kid okay raise him to how old 18 that's an arbitrary number to me to pick his whole life which is a possibility i given given how he you know everything i don't want to give away the movie but we were really like and then is it going to be based on how they raise him if you get released that's what i was thinking too and I then the like, meaning of the word him very well. So <laughs> that's I was like the whole time, what happens if they're gonna let her and then Jesse Eisberg's fucked? Or and then where at the end you get to play a little bit, they is the word released? Does that mean released? 
what exactly does released mean to whoever is controlling? Because when you watch it, you're like, wait a minute, what just fucking happened? The end too, because I didn't, it was a one for one switch, a trade, but there has to be more. So where are the other, what's the, where are the extras going? Are they building something? Yeah. I where know. it was, oh, I fucking loved it. It was when you told me to watch that, I was like, okay. And uh, I started it and we're like, all right, this is kind of weird. And then all of a sudden when the baby happens, the, the, the 10 minutes after the baby the next couple days, you're like, okay, this, what is going on? Know, that's, that was, it's one of those movies where you watch it and after you're like, what the fuck just happened? Like, what did I just watch? A hole in the ground, it does not explain what happens. The hole in the ground, the whole movie. Vivarium does, does not explain it either, but you know what's going on in... You don't know the details, but you know what's happening. And that's what I really liked about it, that we knew, I don't want to say it, you know. It's not like to an extent, but it also- like You really you don't know, like yeah. wander and be like, what? I mean- <laughs> like it, the street, when they go under the street, the sidewalk. And then you, it totally changes the whole movie. <laughs> You're like, what the, f what? Well, uh, interesting that Colin brought it up. He goes, it's because the cigarette touched the boy. That's the only reason why that happened. And I think that's true. Because when he, the other incident with the fire, yeah, the results were not the same. Honestly, the whole, that whole movie just left questions in my head. And then what I asked you about what they find yeah. at the bottom, is that everywhere or particular or that... Guys, go watch Vivarium. Go fucking watch it. Vivarium, a hole in the ground. And you know what? Almost, after almost every show, movie, whatever that I watch that is somewhat confusing or that leaves you with questions, I go and I look it up and I look up all the theories <clears throat> that could possibly be. And I haven't done that with this movie yet. So I actually want to do that and see. With Vivarium? Yeah. And see, like, what people are saying. I wonder if there's other things that we missed. I'm sure there are. Yeah. I'm sure. Like, and that's where you find it on, like, those crazy Reddit threads that are, like, yeah. all these theories. One of the things that I asked Colin was, when he was getting a little older, I was like, is that, like, during, at the very end of the movie, I was like, is that the real estate agent? And he's like, no. I was like, okay. But then at the end, when you see, you're like, well, it's not him, but with yeah. purpose. It was wild. So fucking yeah. wild, guys. Go watch it. Go watch all the movies that we just mentioned. because they're Host, oh, Vivarium. What was the other one? A Hole in the Ground. Well, if you like spooky stuff. Uh, Vivarium's not a horror movie. It is not yeah. a horror movie. It's more psychological thriller, I would say. For sure. Definitely right? psychological. Psychological mystery, maybe? Psycho yeah, psychological, definitely. Something psychological. It's not horror, but it's, yeah. It's so weird. Um, and then the only one that you haven't watched yet is The Rental. Highly recommend. You and The Lodge, you said. Rental. And The Lodge. Yeah. The Lodge is wild. Really? Oh, damn. All right. Then yeah. I'll watch it. So watch those movies. Let us know what you think. But I love this episode. This is dope. <laughs> guess, uh, guess what I ordered right before we recorded? What? The, I finally got the flag. Or the, oh, I ordered the did? flag. I'm so excited. I can't wait till you get it. <clears throat> me too so and at first i thought i could get a, a cheaper one because i saw a whole bunch on amazon three by fives custom flag i was like oh shit they're only 30 bucks not fucking true guys if you own a boat or a truck and you're planning to fly this flag outside you cannot get those cheap ones no. i went deep into the reviews yeah, they're like those are meant for frats to hang on oh, the wall the walls. Yeah. it is not meant to be in 50 mile an hour wind in the outdoor weather in the conditions also they said that the real cheap double-sided flags that when you fly them in the sun you see right through them yeah and so you see and so it looks shitty and they're like real ones have another layer of sewing between right like, oh. okay so i had to buy a little bit more expensive one. actually mom bought it for me yeah as a present for the boat so We'll have an effing priceless flag, and I'll take a badass picture on the boat soon. Yes. With scotch, of course. Yes, wear your, wear your merch. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, so, uh, did the Boy Scouts of America call you? Guys! What happened I, with that? 
So last episode, we talked a little bit about um, those like crazy commercials that you see about like recalls, side effects, lawyers suing, whatever. And then there was one about the Boy Scouts of America. And if you've been molested, blah, 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 blah. And, blah. and they said it doesn't matter how long ago. And it doesn't matter how long ago. Guys, this week, I get a text message <laughs> that literally <laughs> says, you're entitled to millions from the scouts. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wait a second. Really? <laughs> Jackpot. <laughs> Wait, it, it really just said that? It's like straight up? That's how it started? Straight up? I, I sent it to you, right? No, you did not. Because I you told me about it because I was laughing super hard. Because you, you were like, did you put my name or sign me up on something? I was like, no. Oh, I would not do that. I'm pretty sure I deleted the message is the bad thing. But it's uh -huh. so weird that they just cold texted you like out of fucking nowhere? They straight up cold texted me and I was like... <laughs> Did they not even check the sex of you? Like, male or female? Nope, doesn't matter. Send it to everyone. I was like, this is weird. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I don't have it anymore. That's super like, fucking funny. Yeah, I don't want that shit on my phone. <laughs> well, if you're listening and you were molested in the Boy Scouts, go get your money, guys. Go get <laughs> your money. Don't you let Scoutmaster Kevin. Kevin get away with that. No, no. That's right, ridiculous. Guys. I see those commercials every fucking night. Like, you know, I stay up late. Yeah. <laughs> those commercials run the 3 to 5 a.m. slot. Like, I'm telling you, <laughs> run it. <laughs> oh, thank you so Here, much. Bye, boy. Bye, Ujo. Ujo, oh, come hi, here. Ujo. He's hiding. Ujo, come here. He's hiding his head. <gasps> hi, Ujo. My big boy. So beautiful. <laughs> Alright guys, well thank you so much for listening to this episode. Thank you so, so much to our bands. Hell yeah, we start off with Saltwater Slide, our local Texas reggae band. Uh, Good Times is a song that we open up with. And you know what, I just saw the uh one of the other guy one of the band members the other day and they are taking this time of lockdown and quarantine to put out some badass music so i'm excited to hear some of their new stuff oh yeah so go follow them on social media on youtube and our outro song is so damn nice by love kill the hero with lead singer wally robles hell yeah wally go follow wally go follow love kill the hero on youtube facebook all social media accounts and go give them both some love because they're awesome. And they're, they're both awesome. so badass. Their music's so, so badass. <clears throat> I'm, I'm really pri not privileged. Um, I'm so excited to actually know some local people that are actually badass and good. Like, I've been my whole life, I've obviously seen live music around town, but I've never really been friends or known <clears throat> anyone that's actually very musically talented. And both of them, everyone in the band, all the guys are great. And Wally, too. They're fucking really cool absolutely they're so talented give them all some love thank you guys so much and we'll see you guys next tuesday see you guys it's getting late my body's tired that's all